During the First World War, the Arabs rebelled and helped the Allies drive the Ottomans from Syria, and Faisal was made king. However, the British and French had previously signed the Sykes-Picot Agreement, dividing the Middle East between themselves, and Syria had been promised to the French. This angered many like the al fatat a secret nationalist society, and the Alawites, the Shia sect who rebelled against the French in the northern mountains. In 1920, the Syrians tried to assert their independence, but the French issued an ultimatum to King Faisal, and he quickly surrendered. Some did rebel, but they were quickly crushed during the Franco-Syrian War, and the French took full control over Syria and Lebanon. However, they ruled over many ethnicities and religions, which the Ottomans allowed to govern over their own affairs as part of a complicated devolved system of rule. But the French tried to centralise rule, angering the local elites. Plus, many outside of the cities lived a nomadic lifestyle, but the new borders limited their movements, and they were also prevented from carrying arms and had to pay taxes on livestock. And the region experienced a great change as many Kurds and Armenians fled into Syria from Turkey, and the French began building roads through the nomads' territory. However, the nationalist leaders that had fled to Cairo were fractured and could do little to foster a rebellion. Instead, the rebellion started with the Druze, a small but very loyal religious sect who formed the majority in the Jabal al-Druze region. They had been led by the al atrash family since the 19th century and often rose up against the Ottomans. And in 1922, one member of the family, Sultan al atrash demanded the release of a man who tried to assassinate the French General Gouraud. He even attacked a French convoy in the hopes of freeing the assassin, However, this failed and he fled into exile in Jordan. The next year, Salim al atrash resigned as ruler of the Druze, and the Marjils, a council of notable people, decided to elect a Frenchman to undermine the family's power. Captain Cabrillet was an intelligence officer in the region and he was made governor of Jabal al-Druze, but he was only elected to serve three months. Nevertheless, he quickly began to disarm the population and use prisoners as forced labour. Meanwhile, Sultan al atrash had returned from exile and he sent a delegation to the French High Commissioner, hoping to end this injustice. But the members of the delegation were arrested, so on August the 23rd, 1925, he called for a revolution. His family had regained the support from the Druze, but the revolution also had supporters from al fatat nomadic groups and a broad spectrum of the Syrian population. Meanwhile, the French only had around 15,000 troops in the country, and little to no presence in Jabal al druze so the rebels were able to completely rout a small French column initially, and then they met around 3,500 French troops at al Masra. The French moved slowly as the railways and roads had been destroyed, and arrived in al Masra exhausted. So the rebel cavalry launched a surprise assault and drove the French back, killing most of the French in their retreat. General Mouchaud was recalled from Syria in shame, being replaced by General Gamelin, but by now the French had to withdraw from the region entirely for the winter. Sultan al atrash was made president of the new National Republic, so the French promised elections in early 1926 in the regions that had not joined the rebellion, trying to stop it from spreading. But this just encouraged people in Hama to rise up in October, and the French bombarded the city. Plus, that same month as the rebels marched on Damascus, some rose up in the city and attacked French troops. So the French retreated from Damascus and began to bombard that city as well. But to continue the war, al atrash began to demand Christians and Jews pay taxes, and there was infighting amongst the Arabs, Circassians and Kurds. But still, the French had no control outside Damascus, so they installed Taj al-Din al-Hassani as president of Syria, and made promises of eventual self-government. Some laid down their arms at this news, fracturing the rebels even more, and thousands more French troops began to arrive in Syria, and cities like Hama and Damascus were bombarded once again. Then 50,000 French troops drove al atrash back into the mountains in a summer offensive, and he finally fled into Transjordan the following year. There, the British expelled him to Saudi Arabia, where he lived in exile. But other rebels were granted amnesty, and French policy in Syria softened as a result. For instance, in 1930, there was a new constitution, which was helped drafted by former rebel Ibrahim Hanunu and his National Bloc Party. And this led to the creation of the Syrian Republic, which was separate from Lebanon. Plus, independence talks were held in the 1930s, but they came to nothing, and it was only after World War II that Syria gained its independence. 